Hello everyone. Welcome to SEC 304, using certificate-based authentication on containers and web servers on AWS. I'm Ram Ramani, a security solutions architect with AWS, and I'm here with Kevin Riolis, senior architect from Black Sky, and Josh Rosenthal, a product manager with AWS Private CA Service Team. In this presentation, we're going to talk to you about Black Sky's experience on using AWS Certificate Manager and Private Certificate Authority to issue and manage end entity certificates for the geospatial imaging infrastructure that Black Sky provides as a service to their clients. Next, let's take a look at a two minute video that our customer Black Sky put together talking about what they do. As we begin this session, I want to start off by giving you an overview of the advantages of using ACM Private CA. ACM is an acronym that we use for AWS Certificate Manager. Using AWS Certificate Manager, you can generate public and private certificates. ACM directly integrates with load balancers, API Gateway, and CloudFront, and offers managed renewals to prevent solution outages due to TLS certificate expiration. ACM Private CA offers the ability to create complete CA hierarchies within AWS or extend your on-prem root CA into AWS by creating subordinate CAs. The private keys for CAs that you create using ACM Private CA lives in a FIPS 140-2 Level 3 validated HSM. In addition, AWS also provides um, capabilities to have full visibility into the CA usage. ACM and private CA can be used separately. When used together, customers can use ACM to request private certificates from a CA within private CA, and then apply those certificates to AWS resources, or in the case of EC2 instances, export these private certificates and install them on EC2 instances. These exported certificates still benefit from managed renewal as ACM renews the certificate and then provides a CloudWatch event to notify the owner, or you can kick off automation to rotate the certificate at the endpoint. ACM Private CA also offers many custom templates such as code signing, OCSP, and some others. And just like all other AWS services, ACM Private CA is completely API driven and we offer pay as you go pricing. So, what are the key takeaways that you'll get out of this presentation? Number one, insight into the design choices made by Black Sky security team for managing their PKI infrastructure to achieve TLS everywhere. Number two, Kevin 
from Black Sky will share in detail the methods Black Sky used to automate certificate availability and rotation for their containers and EC2 instances. Number three, Josh will present deployment best practices and recommendations based on usage patterns that we have learned from Black Sky and other customers. Next, I'm going to hand off to Kevin from Black Sky to talk to us about their Black Sky TLS Everywhere initiative. Kevin, off to you. Thanks very much, Ram. The bottom line is we're a satellite company. We take pictures from space and we do a lot of different things with them. We move a lot of important data around. The bottom line from that is that we need to protect all of that information and ACM is the way we do it. The goal is to allow our customer to schedule imagery collection from our satellite constellation as well as providing archived imagery upon request. The system is comprised of three main segments, platform, ground and control, and satellite communications and operation. The platform and ground and control segments are implemented in AWS and AWS GovCloud, utilizing primarily AWS provided services. The platform segment includes the user interface, order management, and other support applications. The ground and control segment includes tasking and mission planning for the satellite constellation and raw image processing prior to delivery back to the platform. The satellite communications and control segment includes ground stations located at multiple locations around the world and, of course, satellites. Users are able to see when the image they want will be available and then schedule the picture. They can ask for specific details around the image and apply analytics to one or more images as desired. Obviously, the entire process needs to be as secure as possible, so we've implemented certificate-based security everywhere. We primarily use CloudFront as our content distribution network, backed by a mix of JavaScript and HTML stored in S3. In addition, we have containers running in AWS Fargate performing compute-intensive operations, as well as providing access to back-end applications. The Fargate containers are fronted by either an application load balancer or an API gateway. CloudFront, the application load balancer listener, and the API gateway are HTTPS only and protected by an AWS ACM public certificate. Our back-end applications are a combination of containers running in Fargate, Lambda functions, and AWS batch jobs. Each application, container, Lambda, or job, is issued its own certificate, which is used to securely access Amazon RDS, MongoDB, and Elasticsearch data stores. Additionally, certificates will be used to authenticate applications to each other using mutual TLS authentication, ensuring all communications within our system are protected by TLS. We deploy Elasticsearch from Elastic Inc. on EC2 instances. We use user data scripts to retrieve the ARN of the ACM private CA certificate from the parameter store, then call request certificate and export certificate to create a new private certificate for that specific instance. We use the fully qualified domain name of the instance as the distinguished name and a common cluster name as the subject alternative name. We use the distinguished name for mutual certificate authentication between nodes in the cluster and the subject alternative name or cluster name to validate connections from external applications. The script then updates the Elasticsearch configuration file and key store to reference the new certificate before starting the Elasticsearch process. When instances are retired, we have a Lambda watching for specific termination activity and that Lambda deletes the certificate from ACM once the instance is terminated. We update our Elasticsearch version every month or so, eliminating the need to manage certificate expiration. If we did find ourselves running the same version for a year or more, we would simply roll, update the instances in the cluster to get new certificates. To ensure the fully qualified domain name is unique to a specific VPC, we set our own internal domain name by creating and using a custom DHCP option set. 
We also have another Lambda managing Route 53 entries for clustered deployments like Elasticsearch and any other cluster with a common name. The combination of the DHCP option set and the Route 53 management Lambda ensures our certificates pass validation checks. We use GitHub as our code repository and GitHub webhooks to communicate with the rest of the CI-CD infrastructure in AWS. The webhooks communicate to a Lambda fronted by an API gateway. The Lambda downloads the code from GitHub, then copies the code to S3. Once in S3, the Lambda triggers code pipeline. Code pipeline starts code build to run the build. As part of the build step, we use custom certificate management programs to either create or renew the con or renew the container certificate. If the certificate doesn't exist, we create a new one. Otherwise, we check if expiration is within 90 days, and if so, we renew it. We store the ARN of the certificate in the parameter store in a location only accessible by that container. We do this to ensure that neither certificates nor keys are stored in any containers prior to the deployment. When the container is actu actually started, it gets the ARN of the certificate and exports the certificate end key at runtime, then uses the certificate. Thank you, Kevin, for that deep dive into how Black Sky designed their PKI automation. Your use of code pipelines removed the repetitive manual processes. I'm glad to see you leveraging automation at scale for your certificate deployments. Now I want to talk about some deployment recommendations that we've seen work well for you and other AWS customers. Many organizations are similar to Black Sky in that they have multiple PKIs or a need for a PKI hierarchy to span both AWS cloud and on-premise operations. This diagram shows an example where the root CA lives on-premise and the intermediate and subordinate issuing CAs are managed by private CA. Many private CA customers built their CA hierarchies in this structure because they already had a root CA but they wanted the availability of the cloud for certificate issuance. By keeping their existing on-premise CA, they did not have to push out a new route of trust to their environment. They could use their existing trust stores as the newly created CAs are signed by that original route. This simplified and sped up implementation. These customers made plans to transition when the root CA expired making for a clean transition point. There are other customer I've talked to, they almost have a reverse architecture. They keep the root of trust in the cloud to allow for control, visibility, and availability to the root, whereas they have the CAs that issue the certificates on premise. In this hierarchy, they're able to issue certificates quickly, say to their offline manufacturing facilities, or to certain deployments where they need the CAs close at hand. PKIs and private CA allow for flexibility in deployment, and it's an important place to start looking at when you are evaluating how to deploy PKI and TLS across your infrastructure. So diving into considerations, here are five areas to think about when planning a CA. Scale, rapid delivery, reliability, speed, and security. Understanding the scale can help you determine where your CAs should be located. Should it be all in one place, or is your deployment spread across multiple global regions? Rapid delivery speaks to the tools that will accelerate your organization's deployment and maintenance of your PKI. System reliability or availability differs based on a system and a PKI that pushes out one certificate per year per endpoint versus one that needs to renew certificates daily or even every four hours. This can define where the certificates are located and therefore where you need your CAs located. Speed really dives into the how many certificates you have, where and when you need them. For example, if you need thousands of CA of certificates in a batch, then 
you want to make sure that you have an issuance rate that's going to meet up to your needs or multiple CAs that allow you to achieve that. Lastly, but of course never last, there's security. When you're thinking about a CA, you need to think about how to administer the CA, how to set up the right uh, responsibilities and uh, capabilities of the issuers and put in place appropriate controls and audit around it. I wanted to close talking about one more area of deployment, and that's about CA and certificate issuance and all the components that make it up, both in managing it, the CA itself, and managing issuance and renewal. The challenge baked into PKI is the combination of all of the components that come with the risk of service failure if either a certificate doesn't, isn't available, if the renewal infrastructure isn't available, if a CA expires, all of those could prevent business because you don't have the certificate available that you need. As you look at the structure of the certificate requester and the certificate authority, you can see all of these components. The point of using a service for certificate management and the certificate authority are to offload the differentiated heavy lifting of PKI and provide APIs and tools to enable automation. For example, ACM Private CA can take over all of the components on the right, and, the, and ACM handles all of the issuing, which are components on the left, as you can see here in the slide. Then you can use CloudFormation to automate those pieces if you wish, or manage them through the console. These capabilities simplify the whole CA process and issuance process for your organization. Thanks, Josh. Those are some valuable deployment recommendations that every customer should consider when designing or redesigning their PKI or TLS infrastructure. To summarize, we started by talking about Black Sky's goals to achieve TLS everywhere. We saw how Black Sky was able to protect data in transit throughout their infrastructure using certificate-based authentication using AWS Certificate Manager. The agility and managed renewal of certificates provided by ACM allowed the Black Sky team to continue innovating on their core value proposition while accomplishing their security goals. So what can you do to get started on AWS Certificate Manager? First of all, understand your organization's PKI needs. How does your CA hierarchy look like today? or what hierarchies make sense for your business. We have prescriptive guidance for this in our documentation. We also give you a one month free trial for a CA that you can actually stand up in your AWS account. You'll see how easy it is with a few clicks to set up a certificate authority and start operating on it immediately. Whether you're building web applications, containerized applications, or anything custom, use private certificates from ACM to take care of your TLS needs so that you can focus on your application development and continue to innovate on AWS. Here are some links where you can find more information, blogs, and even a an hands-on workshop that you can try out on your own. Thank you all for attending this session. And last but not the least, please take some time to fill out the session survey and provide us any feedback that you may, might have for us. Thank you.